On Thursday, the constituencies of Wakefield and Tiverton and Honiton held by-elections to elect new MPs. Both of these by-elections were triggered by the resignation of an incumbent Conservative MP, and they were seen as litmus tests for Boris Johnson's flailing premiership. So it was pretty terrible for the Prime Minister when the Conservatives lost both seats by sizeable margins, with the Lib Dem win in Tiverton and Honiton marking the largest numerical majority ever overturned in British political history. So in this video, we're going to give you some context about the two constituencies, explain the results and ask what this all means for Boris Johnson. Before we start, a bunch of our viewers didn't know that we actually have other YouTube channels. You can find much more news from us if you head over to TLDR EU, US and Global. Subscribe to the channels you're interested in, or just all of them to get the most from TLDR, and stay in the loop. The link's below. So, let's start by giving you a sense of the two constituencies. Let's start with Wakefield. Now, in general, we should probably be wary of overusing the term Red Wall, but Wakefield really is your archetypal Red Wall seat. Sitting in West Yorkshire in the north of England, Wakefield used to have a thriving local coal industry which collapsed in the late 70s, with the last Wakefield collieries closing in 1983. Today, Wakefield is significantly poorer than it used to be, with a median weekly earning of just £503, according to the latest ONS data from 2021. Wakefield is also less educated than the rest of the UK. Just 11% of Wakefield residents have a degree, compared to about 17% in the UK as a whole, and about 28% of Wakefield residents have no qualifications at all, significantly higher than the 23% figure for the UK. Finally, Wakefield is slightly less ethnically diverse and slightly older than average. According to the latest census data from 2011, about 8.3% of Wakefield residents are ethnic minority, compared to about 12% in the UK as a whole, and 16.9% of Wakefield residents are over the age of 65, compared to 16% nationally. Given these demographic facts, it should come as little surprise to viewers to know that Wakefield is strongly pro-Brexit with 62% of Wakefield residents voting for Brexit in the 2016 referendum. In every election from 1932 until 2019, Wakefield voted Labour. However, the gap between Labour and Conservatives began narrowing at the turn of the millennium, and in 2019, Labour MP Mary Cray was finally ousted by Conservative challenger Imran Ahmed Khan, who won with 47.3% of the vote, to Cray's 39.8%. Unfortunately for the Conservatives, their victory was short-lived, and in May a by-election was triggered when Khan was convicted of sexually assaulting a 15-year-old boy. Now, most commentators thought this would be easy pickings for Labour. Not only was the incumbent Conservative MP convicted of child abuse, but the Conservatives' poll numbers have fallen precipitously from their 2019 highs. And, as you probably already know, Boris Johnson is currently beset by scandals. The New Statesman's electoral model, which basically uses demographic data and voting history to predict constituency-specific outcomes, predicted that Labour should win the seat by 10 points. And the two polls done in the area gave Labour a 20 and 23-point lead respectively, broadly in line with the local election results from early May. So, that's Wakefield. Tiverton and Honiton, on the other hand, is a classic rural Tory seat in southern England, full of farmers and pensioners. The average age in the seat is about 54, well above the UK average of 48, with 50% more pensioners than average, who account for about 28% of the total population. According to the 2011 census, it's 98.5% white ethnicity, well above the regional and national average. The area is also pretty pro-Brexit, with 56% of residents voting to leave the EU in 2016. It's voted Conservative every year since its inception in 1997. And its predecessors, the constituencies of Tiverton and Honiton respectively, had been Conservative since the 1880s. 
In 2019, incumbent Neil Parrish was re-elected with a stonking 25,000 vote majority, about 60% of the total vote. This by-election was triggered after Parrish was caught watching porn in the House of Commons, apparently when he accidentally clicked on a porn site while looking for tractors online. Nonetheless, despite having a 25,000 vote majority, the Conservatives faced a strong challenge from the Lib Dems here who overturned a similarly large Conservative majority in the North Shropshire by-election. The two seats are demographically very similar, and Lib Dems did better in Tiverton and Honiton than in North Shropshire at recent local elections. Anyway, so what were the results? Well, let's start with Wakefield. With a 40% turnout of 27,446, Labour beat the Conservatives by 18 points. This is a very good result for Labour. A hefty 5,000 vote majority in a classic red wall seat bodes well for the next election. And it's also better than the national polls suggested. Conversely, it's a pretty poor result for the Conservatives. While they wouldn't have expected to keep the seat, they probably wouldn't have expected to lose by such a significant margin. And history suggests they're now well on track to lose the next election with the 12.7 point swing representing the largest swing to Labour from a sitting Conservative government since the days of John Major. However, if Wakefield was a bad result for Johnson, Tiverton and Honiton was utterly atrocious. With a 52% turnout of about 42,500, the Lib Dems beat the Conservatives by an astonishing 14 points. The 30% Conservative to Lib Dem swing to overturn the Conservative 24,000 vote majority represents the third largest swing at a by-election and the largest numerical majority overturned in British political history. Just a reminder, Tiverton and Honiton had been staunchly Conservative for the last 140 years before this. All in all, this was a terrible night for the Conservatives. They performed worse than expected in both seats, marking the first double by-election loss since 1991, and anti-conservative tactical voting was more prevalent than ever. In reaction, Conservative Party Chairman Oliver Dowden has resigned, Johnson's first cabinet resignation. While this is unlikely to trigger another vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister, such appalling results will heap yet more pressure on Johnson, and history suggests they're well on track to lose the next election if they don't somehow change course. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to subscribe to TLDR UK. Remember, you can get a whole lot more from TLDR by making sure that you're subscribed to our other channels too. TLDR EU, US and Global. Thanks for your support.